Hello, you guys, and welcome to the Danielle K. White podcast. You guys, I am so excited,、um, mainly because I invited myself to your studio. But <laughs> <laughs> we have Elena Cardone here, you guys, and I've been a big fan for years. But I just st- hanging out with you for the last three days has been amazing. So we are moving to Miami, and I'm so excited. I had Elena as our realtor; she was showing us around for the past three days. And like I said, you're just an incredible person, and I'm big on energy. And it was just fun to hang out with you. So I'm honored to be here, and I'm honored to have you on the show. So we're gonna get started, and I'm just gonna dig right in. And I love it. And and thanks for <laughs> having the wherewithal to think of us doing a show today because it's、yeah. really my honor. So oh, thank, thank you. you, thank you for being here. So you probably don't get this question asked a lot, and I'm just gonna like dive right in because you shared yesterday how you and Grant met. Oh. And I love that story so much、uh-huh. that I'm like, I'm sorry. That's where we're starting on the podcast because I was like, oh, was it just like love at first sight? And you're like, no. So share how you and Grant met and the the perseverance that he had for those 13 months. <laughs> We met on a commercial shoot in downtown Los Angeles.、Right. He was friends with the director of the shoot.、Mm. I didn't think anything of him. Like, didn't even call, register on、right. the radar. He was. Like the mock-up of a businessman, right? And I was an artist and actress. I was in my twenties at that time,、mm. and so I had only dated kind of like the rock star, movie、right. star type guy. And、um, it just, he just, it was a, a non-occurrence for me.、Mm. But he gets my number from the director. He's、right. no no in Hollywood. <laughs> gets my number from the director. We have this disastrous phone call. Oh, so he did call you?、Oh, he called me. Okay, we had one phone.、Call. Okay. And he was, and I have moved to Los Angeles when I was seventeen, so、okay. now I'm in my late twenties at this point. And he's like, you know, people tend to do better when they hang out without me. I mean, when they <laughs> hang out with me. And I just thought, oh、You're、my like, god,、no. not another like cheese ball <laughs> producer guy that's rich that thinks they can buy women、right. with this. I, I was just like, the pickup yeah, line, yeah, yeah.、Uh, the pickup line. <laughs> and he's embarrassed about that pickup line、that's、to this、funny. day. He hates when I tell that story. That's funny because now, of course, it's true. Yeah, yeah. My life definitely improved. So he's always、right. like, you have to get that part into the story. Right. You know, if you tell the story. So. That part's done. But anyway, <laughs> we had this one disastrous phone call, and I just thought, "Oh God," and hung up with him. Right. And then for this was back in the answering machine days. I、okay. have to admit. Okay. But twice a month, every month for the next thirteen months, he left. He would leave、spell. a message. <laughs> yeah. And I wasn't scared by it. It wasn't like. Did you call him back? He just never. <laughs> no, because I mean, you know, I'll drag on myself here for a minute. But you know, in my twenties. I was a model and actress.、Mm. I shot shotguns.、Right. You know, I was ranked in California. I also had a fleet of hot rods. Right. I worked in the garage on these cars with all these dudes. Like I thought I was a badass. Yeah, yeah. You had your own house, everything. I had my own、yeah. house. I had the hot rods everywhere, and I could talk about them and work on them. Right. And I was shooting shotguns. So I mean, you know,、yeah. it, I was kind of a package deal. Yeah. Back then. Now you know. Good lord, I'm just trying to hold it together. <laughs> But back then, I thought I was somebody, and he was a no one. So he、me. kept pursuing. He, he keeps pursuing. leaving you. And how did he find? How did you finally like meet and come together? Well, because Grant is、He's, artful, okay, and skillful. And、okay. Grant says it's not stalking if it works. <laughs> so he figured out who my like kind of girlfriends were、okay. at the time, and I was party girl. I was going out to the clubs in the late twenties. Yeah, yeah, know, L.A. Right,、maybe. right. And so then all of a sudden he starts showing up because he's become friends with this, you know, one of my best friends at the time. Right. So he starts showing up, and when he starts showing up, I was like,、eh, he's not that bad. <laughs> I mean, but not for me to date. Yeah,、anything. yeah. You're like, okay, he's warming yeah, up on you. And then he became safer. You don't know、mm. this part of the story. He became safer because he dated the friend. Oh. Yeah, and now Grant tells the story that that's an old Italian trick. If you want the girl, you got to date the friend. Okay. But. So、to get、did. close to you, yeah, okay. Because then, in his mind, he thinks that would make him more desirable to me. Right, I want him if my friend wants him. But it was sneaky. But psychologically, I didn't want that. I、right. didn't want him. But it made it safer to have him around. Because right. Because I was like, oh, he's with her. Right. And so, that- how did he dump her? And then. Well, they were <laughs> friends with benefits. Okay. Because the creepy part of the story is, is the same friend was like trying to push him on me when she was dating him. Okay. And she was like, "I don't know why you just won't go out with Grant. Like he's a great guy." I was like, 
ew. Yeah. Like disgusting. You're like, are you dating him? Like, never. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, never mention that to me again. Right. So the crazy part of the story, story goes, the story can go on, but right. I'm sure you want to move on to other topics, but. No, no one hears this. That's what we want to hear the, it. We, no one knows these parts of the story because right. it's just, it is a little bizarre, but that girl ended up breaking or, you know, her and Grant ended. Right. Eventually, you know, the story, Grant and I hung out as friends for a while. And then finally I just kind of fell in love with him. Yeah. That's a whole other story because I had never seen or met anyone like him ever. Right. And it was just interesting. I love captivating my heart, but getting back to the friend. Yeah. So the friend and him break up okay. and the friend now dates and falls in love with his twin. Oh, you brother, didn't tell me that. His identical <laughs> twin brother. Cause it's so weird. Yeah. The story is yeah. a little weird, but, um, so they started dating. So okay. she had no problem that we were dating cause that they were always funny. friends. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So I love what you said. You told us this yesterday. How he got your attention was like, hey, will you date me for three days? Share that part of the story. Because so I was like, that's story, good. That's I was good. terrified. My longest relationship prior to Grant. Mm-hmm. Now we've been married for 20 years. But um, I was in my late 20s. Right. And the longest relationship that I had been in was a year. Right. And um, I was die hard. I'm going to be this. Mm-hmm. Never get married. Never have kids. So, so horrible. Mm-hmm. Like to think that I actually had those thoughts. Right. But I did. And... Um, and so I was terrified of relationships. I didn't mm. want to be controlled by men. I, it was right. very important for me to be independent, powerful woman. Right. Never depend on a man for anything. Right. So I was really terrified and he knew that, but he never made me wrong for that. Mm. He was always kind of a little amused by it. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so when we finally had our first kiss or whatever, and he asked me to be his girlfriend right after the first kiss. <laughs> He's like, he well, now it came very shortly. After okay. That. It was like, we had the first kiss. And then the next day we went to this wedding out in Santa Barbara. Cause we were living in LA at the okay. time. And then when we went out to dinner in Santa Barbara, he said, will you be my girlfriend? And I was thinking in my head, what are we in the sixth grade? This yeah. Yeah. So weird. Like I've never had a guy ask me, will you be my girlfriend? Yeah. But he said, will you be my girlfriend? And I've, you know, whether it's for three days, 30 days or 30 years. And he gave this beautiful speech about mm-hmm. how he promised to make my life better right. and to be monogamous and faithful and blah, 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 blah. And I literally said to him, I said, three days. Okay. I can, <laughs> I can promise I can commit three to days. three days. I can commit to three days. And, and he said, that's good. And now 20 we'll years later, 20, 20 years, years later. later of marriage. And he has me right around his little finger. I'm like, what? How is it to me? <laughs> so I have to ask this question next then, because you're this like powerful, you know, sort of boss woman, twenties and thirties. How did you make that shift? Cause I think it's so important for women to like, like you said, like you're kind of like melted into him and you're like allowed him to take care of you. And you now are very, I've seen you speak so many times. You're like talking about the importance of the support role. And so how did you shift? How did you make, Oh God, it was very difficult. Was, I mean, it's not something that happens overnight. So talk about that process. It almost happened overnight because it was the crash of 2008. Mm. And, um, I was pregnant with our first child. I was 36 years old. Okay. Um, and so my acting career was pretty essentially over by then. Mm. I didn't know really where, where was I going to go? What was I going to do? Yeah. His career, we were on the verge of losing everything. And that's when I mm. had my, uh, okay, I really have to be honest with myself right. and with us and where we're going. And why can't I depend on a man? I've been yeah. married to him for four years. I yeah. committed my life. I'm now starting a family with him. Why mm. can't I depend on him? Mm. Why this? Why that? Right. Who is it? Who's saying this? And, right. and then I realized it was all these feminine female voices in mm. my head of people that didn't even have a name or a face attached to mm. them. It was more of a generality. Yeah. The idea. Concepts. Mm. Yeah. And so that's when I um, had to just really look at, well, honestly, at that time, he had a more um, chance of success financially mm-hmm. for us. Mm. So it was either, okay, I'm going to go all in and try to become this actress, movie star pregnant. Mm. Is that realistic? Or am I going to get into some other field of yeah. career? Or can I actually envision this future, which we're living today, which right. did seem impossible at the time. Right. Like, I didn't really think, I mean, of course I really thought we could manifest and I believed, I believed, I yeah, believed. Yeah. But my real self 
the girl from New Orleans who never went to mm-hmm. college. You never really had like this kind of wealth. Mm-hmm. I wasn't, I didn't really think we were going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. But back then I said, okay, this is the vision. And I said, okay, what do I have to do to get an alignment with him to mm-hmm. work in a coordinated right. effort to, to reach this dream together? Right. So we laid out the dream. Mm-hmm. We said, what's your role? What are you the boss of? What areas? Mm-hmm. What's my role? What am I the boss of? Mm. So we can stop fighting each other yeah, yeah. for the power position of this male female right. thing. And how can how can I still feel like I'm an independent, strong woman mm-hmm. without having to you be the boss of everything? Yeah. That's not gonna work. Right. But how can can we work together for the bigger vision? And that and that's when I really started to understand, well, right now at that time, my role is gonna be support. Right. I think that that's so beautiful how you just said it. It's like, what's, what's better for the relationship? What's better for the family? What's better for the vision? And you guys kind of co-created something together where it's not like you, you're a part of it. You're a part of the vision and you're a part of the creation, you know? And it's like you said, it doesn't need to be competition. I think right. for a lot of women, I went through this with Garrett, it's the same thing. Like I was like, why am I in competition? Like, if, if I need to support him in this lane right now, then I need to understand my responsibilities and support him there. But I think that's really hard for women, especially women in the working field or the, the, to not have that like collision with their husband. Right. So when did you guys dream up 10X? Like, when did this start? That was Grant Cardell when he wrote the book, The 10X Rule. He didn't mm. even know it was going to turn into the phenomenon that it did. Um, what year was that? She's, I don't know. Cause his first book that he wrote came out of the crash of 2008. Okay. When, um, when Lehman's was collapsing on mm. TV and he went white and I said, what does right. this mean? And he says, that means we're going to die. And I was like, you didn't promise yeah, yeah. me death. You promised my life would get better. Right. From the first phone call. Right. I was like, so I'm not dealing with this. You go to your room and figure it out. Yeah. And don't come out until you do. And that's when he came back with the manuscript which was at that time mm-hmm. a book called Sell to Survive, okay. which I think is now called If You're Not First, You're Last. Mm. And then I think 10X, so that was in 2008. I think 10X came in nine or 10, mm. 20, 2010. Did you have a vision to, to how big it was going to be? No. I, like you just kind of started, like we're going to take this concept. Well, yeah. Well, that was really Grant's envision. Like the first book when he, when he told me here's when he came out of the room, mm-hmm. when he was finally let out, mm-hmm. um, he said, look, I wrote a book. It's not going to make us rich. Books mm-hmm. don't make people rich. Right. Of course, unless you're Harry Potter. Right. Right. Um, but he goes, but now I know what to do. Mm. I'm never going to get us in trouble again financially mm. and you will never worry about money again. Mm. And and he kept his word. Yeah. Um, and so after that, when he wrote the 10 X rule, I just thought, Oh, it's another book to help him because he writes books for himself. Yeah. Cause they like reinforce right. his knowingness and it helps him to kind of put things in a, in a process. Right. And so when he wrote that, I was like, Oh good. Now he's getting to the next phase. Mm. And I just didn't know that was going to be the thing that spawned this movement. Right. Globally. Right. It, I mean, it's, so it's been since 2010. So it's been almost fi- yeah. 15 years. Yeah. And it really started to expand probably in the last five or six years. Probably so, so what is your favorite, what's your favorite part inside of 10X? Like what are you most passionate inside of 10X? Is it 10X health? Is it 10X wealth? Oh, you is mean it- like that? Yeah. Um, there's a lot. Yeah. Because. I'm super passionate about the Grant Cardone Foundation, first mm-hmm. of all, because I want that to be a big legacy. Right. Um, but I'm super, I mean, I mean, I'm so excited about so many things. 10X Health, we're going to change the world. Mm-hmm. I mean, for real. Yeah, like, yeah. hear people talk about this. What we're coming out with, with the genetics and what's, and it is the future right. of healthcare, preventative, right. and people are now going to understand themselves, which is which is not a, a, a blanketed w- good for one is good for all. It's right, unique. it's customized. So, exactly. Mm-hmm. So the 10X Health, we've got, you know, the supplements and and, and all of that that's rolling out. Mm. We don't have to get into all that, but it's patented 47 countries in America. It's going to be huge. So that makes me very happy yeah. for healthcare, for yeah. individuals to really optimize. Mm. Then we go into the real estate and I love real mm. estate. And so right now we have about 15,000 apartments. Uh, we want to grow that to a hundred thousand. And that makes me so proud because we give the opportunity for the everyday person, meaning mm. we buy these institutional grade assets that right. are being traded by, 
JP Morgan or the Teachers Association or this isn't like a mom and pop can right. buy this asset. Right. But we allow a tenant mm -hmm. at one of these properties right. can invest $5,000 and have ownership in that property. How are they ever going to get that? Right. No one. So my mom is an investor, his mm. sister, my sister, like, and they're the same rules uh, 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 across right. everyone. Like I'm an investor. I know that sounds right. crazy, but I told Grant, I was like, look, I know it's crazy because we're together, but right. with my money, it just makes me feel important. I want to be an investor, investor yeah. and have my distributions. So anyway, I'm excited about that because it gives the opportunity mm. for what I consider the everyday person who I am, who Grant is. It's where we came from. Right. It gives all of us an opportunity that we can't just go get because Wall Street's right. not doing that. And, and it's never been done before. And so scaling and growing that and actually having people understand wealth right. and have um, a, a stream of cash flow. Right available, that's not taught in the school system. Right. So that makes me happy. And then stages so where people can talk about and craft their stories. Like that's mm. important. Right. And monetize from stage. So we have so many there's so many collaborations and so many collaborations so many and collaborations yeah, yeah. with other businesses. Yeah. It gives me opportunities to grow and expand and scale with these right. other businesses that trust us. And now we get to be a part of that and even go even more yeah. global. It like, is it's so exciting. To, to me it looks like just a big fan Family. I mean, I know it's expanding and it's huge, but it's like once you're in the 10x family, you have so many opportunities and it's it's just it's I call wild. It, it's the Amazon for the entrepreneur. Yeah, because I love it. now we have the wealth con coming up. So right. now people can understand so many other areas of right investments and right. You know, whether so, it's Cardone Capital or the stock market or whatever, we're 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 you want this, we got that. We so the right. 10x community is really once you come in like Either it's you've got access you've to got a lot access yeah to i love it so how your mom you have two beautiful daughters and one of the things i mean i personally struggled with is like balancing family time mm -hmm. having that mom guilt but also knowing like you have a passion you have a purpose you have a mission essentially essentially so how do you balance doing it all and being a mom <sighs> i know that's like a it such a loaded a question loaded <laughs> question but what I do is I gave up having to be a superhero where mm. I had to do everything myself. Right. So I'm okay now delegating the mm. people that I trust for those roles. Yes. So when I have to be away from business, mm -hmm. I expect the competency of the people that I hired to handle the business mm. until I can come back and, and make sure everything was done correctly and oversee it. Right. You know, when I've had a family assistant or a nanny, mm -hmm. I trust them the nanny. so that when I can be over to the business, they're doing whether it's washing the dishes mm -hmm. or helping prep the food right. while I can be with the kids or they're hanging out with the kids doing homework while I'm sneaking away for a Zoom mm -hmm. call. I'm trying to balance it all. And how I balanced it all is I kind of just juggle. Mm. If the kids really need my attention, they're right. always going to come first. Right. And you know when they really need your attention. Right. Now, if they just need your attention because they're bored, mm -hmm. that's when you've got to artfully have that person distract them right. while you can do the business. Right. And it's an art form. Right. But I've also come to the place where I built up my branch in mm -hmm. the Cardone 10X Empire world, mm. um, which was the 10X Ladies, which I still yes. do every year, by Build an Empire Masterminds. I was mm. doing 10X Couples Retreats. And it was a really expanding. A lot. Yeah. And now the kids are teenagers. Mm. I started to see, oh, wait a minute. More time. I don't want the nanny family assistant mm. coming in and taking my role mm -hmm. as much as I was delegating to her. Right. And so that's when I said, wait a minute, this was just a personal decision. Mm -hmm. And I do have the luxury at this point in my life where I could make this decision. Right. Not all moms do, especially right. single parents or right. you know, whatever right. the circumstance. But even though this production of work makes me very happy, yes. I love it because for me, work is the basis of morale. I feel yes. really good about myself when yeah, I yeah. work and I achieve accomplishments. Right. But I saw this and I said, you know what? While they're teenagers, I only have one last moment before they're out of the house. Right. And I made a sacrifice mm -hmm. to put that division, First. this branch on hold a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
I segued um, the nanny to a different department in right. the office here. And now I'm more in the mom role yep. now. Yeah. And I think that's... I, I had to. I think that, yeah, I was going to say teenage years because I have two teenage daughters too. It's like you have to know when it's like pump the brakes in in certain areas. And like you said, you had the luxury of, of doing so. And somebody that might not have that luxury to do so, the only thing I can tell you is... For me, like when I had that mom guilt and when I felt like I wasn't spending time with my kids, it really made me prioritize even like pricing inside of my business. I'm like, wait, maybe I need to make a price increase so that I can still like make what I need to make. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then I still have time with with my my babies. Right. So I think it's it's so important with with your kids, like you said, to really know when they need you mm-hmm. and really lean into that. And I believe that if you do that, it you'll figure it out, you know? And and so, right. And so I'm, I'm the driver Mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the con do it to the outside world. Right. But for the mothers um, or parents that, that don't have that um, opportunity to make that decision, Mm -hmm. that's healthy for their family. Yeah. The, the one piece of advice that I would give is, and this really helped us throughout raising our children, Mm -hmm which is if you can tell your kids and enlighten them on what, who you are as a family, what your mission is. Right. So team Cardone is about helping people and making a difference. And I believe that if you say we're a team here, Mm -hmm. so kids, I have this limited time and we can do this and this and this. However, if you're okay, while I work, we're creating a future and this is what our future looks like. Right. And this is how you can contribute being Mm -hmm. on the team by Mm -hmm. allowing me to, to work and understand that's your role in helping us move the bar. Right. And so then if you can give them an opportunity to feel like they're they're part of the mission. Yes. Even when you're not there yes. and, and feel less victimized by your absence. Oh, right. she doesn't care about us. She's just mm-hmm. busy with work. But if you can actually include them and say, no, this is what we're you're doing. You're part of it. I think it can actually mm-hmm. set I agree. a really great example I agree. for your kids to emulate. Wow, this is what work ethic mm-hmm. looks like and taking care of your mm-hmm. family. It's the manner in which you present it. Right. It's, it's, I love that you're sharing that because I remember when Garrett and I were like in the thick of things and I would feel so bad and I would bring my girls to when I film something or with me. Mm-hmm. And I remember my daughter, like one day after work, she looked at me and she was like, mommy, thank you so much for everything you do. So even though Aww. I'm like feeling bad, I do agree. Yeah. If you can bring them and, and have them be a part of it, it's like, there's going to have seasons of hustle where you're like, Hey, and then you can kind of pump the brakes when, when you need to. So you're an amazing role model. You're an amazing mother and you're married to Grant. <laughs> you're married to Grant, meaning like he's got a lot of energy. Yes. And you, I've seen you, how you speak about him. Like you push him to grow. How do you do that? And how do you take that on as your responsibility to push Grant, who's got already big visions? How do you, you know, support and also extract the greatness in him is what I like to say. Yeah. Like push him even further. Well, it's easy because I have a 10x vision. Mm. And that is something that I, I, I pride myself on bringing to the relationship. He's the hammer. He's mm. the workhorse. I wouldn't have been able to do it without him because right. I'm not that. So, but the thing that I like that I brought to the table is the vision. Right. And I've been willing to support him. Like I was telling you and Garrett, I may have made a mistake in this area, mm. but when you, I'm able to demand it because I see that anything less than him would be a transgression to him. Mm, yeah. And I don't want to live with his transgressions because that energy mm-hmm. is going to come out in the form of resentment and hostility mm. to me. I wanted it to be focused on the good and the creation right. of who he and us and we are supposed to be for this planet. So right. I've been willing to say, hey, this is who you're meant to be. Right. You're meant to walk amongst the giants. Mm-hmm you know, quotes, the giants. Right. And you're, you're meant to help and support all of us, Mm -hmm. meaning Grant and I, and all of our everyday people. Right. To, to, to be able to have the information that you have. So what does that come with? That came with, I demanded it of him. I understand Mm -hmm. of what that's going to take. And so I was willing to sacrifice the personal me time right until we hit those goals because right. I just felt like I could be wrong 
but I felt like it would have taken us double to get to the finish line because right, right. I kind of felt like you couldn't really do both with how geared right. we were towards that. Now I'm reeling it back, but that's why I could support him because that was my role in the vision. My role in the vision of supporting him was allowing him to run and, right. and also having the, 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 the skin thick enough mm. and how do I get strong enough to bear the weight of, right. which is support him, the whole universe that comes with that. How do I delicately and artfully tell him when he could change things to articulate it in a better way, mm -hmm. knowing he's going to be furious at me thinking mm -hmm. I'm corrections officer, right? but no one else is going to do it. Right. Right. You know what I mean? So, but I'm willing to do that because that's my role to get us better. Yes. And whether he listens to me or not, at least he can think with the data and right. make his own decision. You know what? She might be right. I might be alienating unnecessarily right. people by my by the way I articulate something. And if I can just take a moment to say something better mm. or differently, I can keep the door open. Yeah. I think communication in relationships is, it can be so hard because you're like, I'm not trying to offend you. I'm trying to move the, the mission know. forward. I know. How do you deal with, so for women, like when their husbands are out and they're working and they're pushing so hard, I feel like sometimes it like this little bit of like resentment can build up, but you seem very good at being like, Hey, you're, you're going to run with the giants and the Kings. And how do you manage that? Like it, when he's working so much to like, at least in my experience, when Garrett's like out working like crazy, I, I'm almost like, Oh, I got to support the mission, but there's a piece of me that's like selfish. And I'm like, no, I want, I want like you, like, how do you support him and not like not have any of that resentment build up? Well, I understood I was in sacrifice phase. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was like, if we, the mission was so big, it was mm. so outrageous. It's to yeah. reach 8 billion people on planet earth. So right. I knew there wasn't a moment to spare. We're a lot older than you and Garrett. I, 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 I think, um, you know what I'm saying? And the, and the time clock was mm. running out. So, so for me, um, I just understood we're paying a price today right? so that we could pay any price in the future. Right. So I have, we go on yacht trips now mm. with just the family and two weeks in the south of France on the most incredible yachts. Those are mm. our trips. Those are our trophies. Those are our rewards. That's what we worked for. Right. We've always been in alignment. This is the vision. Right. What do we have to do to get there? Mm. And if I'm fighting you, it's stalling. It's, up. it's yeah. stalling. Yeah, yeah. So as long as at the same time you understand that a relationship mm -hmm. is created and mm. anything that you cease to create on starts to yes, destroy. Yes. You have a house. You cease to create on the house. You're going to get overgrown mm. weeds. The paint's going to start chipping. I love that. It's going to deteriorate. Mm. You have to keep up with everything. So you have to just be aware enough to know that you can't completely mm. neglect your relationship right. or it will deteriorate. You have to create on the marriage. Right. But I also recognize how much do we create and have those wins, which actually mm -hmm. flourishes in the create, because right. I like wins. They make us strong. Stronger, exactly. You know what I mean? Because right. we're like, yeah, we defeated the enemy. Right. We have our allies. You know, we also have our enemies that mm. fortify us. Right. You know, I, so that's how I do it. Well, it's I love just kind of like understanding that I can't completely neglect. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I can't be completely selfish right. because that picture, which it's we so now good. have, man, mm -hmm. it finally manifested, mm -hmm. but it took a decade. Yeah. I just kept holding that picture in my head going, I'm paying the price. I'm paying yeah. the price. We're paying the price. But and now we've paid the price. But I love that you said when you have these moments of wins, it brings you together. Yes. And I also love that you, what you said is if, if you get to this place of where resentment or whatever it is, you're stopping the mission. And what I love that you said is by doing that in a way, you're not going to have impact all these people that you're, you're impacting. So I'm sure for you, you're like, this keeps me going because you know the impact of 10X and what it's going to do. Right. So you're able to really, really focus. And I think that's important for women to understand that you can go as fast as you want and you just have to really co-create with your husband and figure out what is the mission and stay in communication. That's right. What do you guys do to like, what, like on just like a regular basis, how do you guys connect and stay? Is it like weekends are fun for you? Family we time? Do. Like, we, we, how do you guys stay connected? Well, we're my kids are homeschooled, so they're okay. always in the house. Mm -hmm. I'm home now most mm -hmm. of the time. Okay. Um, but we have breakfast together every morning. Um, I tried to, and it worked for mm -hmm. a little bit. 
I finally had a chef come in oh, nice. to make us dinner every night because we were too modern of a family yeah, yeah. before everyone's on their own. I was like, nope, we're family getting dinner. an order. Family mm. dinner. Family dinners were, were so mm. great. But unfortunately, the chef um, moved on. I got a I got to come up with another solution now. Yeah. I am not that solution for the cook. Yeah. You don't I like just, to cook? <laughs> I like to cook my New Orleans dishes okay. and I'm real good at it, but yeah. anything outside of that. So unless they want gumbo or crawfish. They don't want that every night? Too, yeah, exactly. Or <laughs> crawfish corn chowder. Like you ain't eating. Right. You know what I'm saying? So. But yeah, family just, dinners are important. Family dinners. And then we do, you know, we understand, okay, we got growth con coming mm. up. We got wealth con. We got real estate stuff. We got this. We got this. People you guys do stuff as a busy. family unit a lot, huh? We do that as a, but then we say, okay, at the end of this, mm -hmm. we get our two week trip, no staff, no yeah, crew, nobody, just us. And we're in the South France mm -hmm. and then we're going to the restaurants or we're going to make pizzas yeah. together. Or we're going jet skis or we're going, right. you know, touring the chocolate factory or whatever we're doing. Right. We're it's doing like it as a family. Family trip. Yeah. So I love we that. understand, okay, we're paying the price mm -hmm. and then we get to have our reward. Mm -hmm. And then we've pay the price, and then we get to have our right. reward. What was your decision in um, deciding to homeschool your daughters? Well, I've always been traumatized by school. Mm. I think because of my age, I just um, escaped that being drugged. Mm. Um, but because it was just starting to happen as I was mm. leaving school. Mm. There is no doubt in my mind that I would have been drugged. Um, labeled yeah. ADHD. Yeah. I, um, you know, I... I, hate, I lose focus. I'm not interested. I hate in the school. labels. If it's, if it's not interesting to me, I'm not interested. Right. Like, right. Uh, you know, I have attention for about a million open windows in my head. Mm -hmm. But if you are talking to me and it's not important, I'm, I'm, I'm it's do right. And so you can label me for that or mm -hmm. whatever. But hyperactivity, I've been hyper my whole life. Mm -hmm. I've jumped on a trampoline of this of that. I also have this incredible imagination. You know, that they say ADHD people can sometimes come up with these great solutions mm -hmm. because they think outside of the box. That's right. me. I wouldn't trade that for the world. Right. The school system would have definitely you're drugged broken. me. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. but I was an artist. I was a, a mm -hmm. visionary. I, I'm happy with the direction of my life and right. with my whatever labels they would have put on me. Right. So getting back to why the decision to school, I thought school was traumatizing because I didn't fit into the school box. Yeah. And the only reason why I got A's in school was because I have an ability to memorize. Mm. But I didn't have an ability to apply. And schools aren't teaching to apply. Right. They're teaching memorization. What year did blah, blah, blah. How am I going to use that in life? That's just, right. that drives kids insane. Like, you have to study with a purpose. Mm. Why am I learning this? Has right. to be important and engaging. Right. And how do I apply it to life? Right. And if I can't apply it to life, it's not senior data. Right. It's in, it's irrelevant. And and don't you know? So anyway, back to the. So you're a, so the no no I love is, that. I hate school and yeah. and I don't like the school systems. I didn't want them labeling my kids. Yep. I didn't want them drugging my kids. I don't trust the drugged up kids with the black box label that says warning of suicidal, homicidal tendencies right. coming in to shoot up my kids at a freaking school. And so I said, you know, I went to Grand. I was like, uh, I want to, I want, this was way back in the day. I was like, I want to pull the kids out of school in two years. Mm. I want to be global world traveling. Mm. And that was not on the radar. And actually it was less than two years. It was one year. And it was, I pulled them out in 2019 and we okay. went on a global world tour, 19 countries. They came with us. I think that's far senior mm. to anything they would have gotten in do, school. Do they love us? I, I homeschooled my daughters for a couple of years and one did really well with it. And the other one's kind of, she was missing the whole friend dynamic. She's really shy. So I pu actually put her back in school. Right. And she's, she, she's like, I hate school and I get it. I'm like, I'm a, I'm with yeah. you on the whole school thing. But she needed that like social dynamic. How do you get, what do your kid girls that do for the social been, dynamic? That has been, um, the negative mm. because I, I, I do. It's like outweigh the pros and cons. It does. Mm -hmm. But to me, I look at it and, and, and I'm just going to be honest. The, the kids that they hang out with from the school system, mm. I don't care that you know, they're agree. suffering now because mm. they're, they've got issues. It, well, and it's a window. You're, you're protecting them. Yeah. Yeah. So what I do is they're friends with, um, you know, the kids that go to our church mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And, and then there's the social the activities. And, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I was just mm -hmm. going to say. I put them in. They've done a, 
you know, some things stick, some things don't, but they've done rowing and tennis Mm -hmm. and MMA and boxing and, you know, Pilates. So I'm I'm putting them in different groups where they have opportunities to meet other people. Right. And I love what you said. It's like, so you're almost like protecting them so that they can create a healthier mindset and apply things that are going to help them as adults. So even though you're like, you know, you, you have this moment where you're like, oh, you don't have as many friends, but then you're like, but what is the quality of the friends? Right. So, and I told them, you know, I told them, I said, um, I said, you know, there's pluses and minuses for everything in mm-hmm. life. And I said, look, um, the downside for your life is that you, I want you with a security person yeah. in certain places that mm-hmm. you go and they don't like that. Mm-hmm. And I said, so that, that sucks for you. And I get it. And, um, and you are homeschooled. And so maybe you don't have this big, huge social life and da, 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 da. And I said, okay, but everyone has, has, you can, you know, you can have it all, but what are you willing to give up? Yeah, I yeah. Said, now your kids didn't go on a 19 country world tour. A lot of your friends don't have private right. planes. A lot of your friends don't hang out with their parents and go on every, right. you travel the world and go here and go there. And right. it, they don't do the cruises right. for the two weeks of South of France. So they want your life. Right. And you think, you and think I you're understand missing out. why yeah, you yeah. want their life. Right. But you understand it's going to look like that no matter what side exactly. you're on. Exactly. Exactly. So this is just a, a sacrifice that you have to make to, yeah. to have the life that we have. I think too, as, as a, as a mother myself too, it's, it's our job to protect our kids. Mm -hmm. So if they don't see the bigger picture, it's like, we have to do what's in their best interest. Right. Okay. Final question. How, what would you say to couples that are watching this podcast? How do you and Grant work so well together? And what advice can you give other couples that are trying to build an empire that are trying to build a legacy? What are some tips that you could give them that really work for you and Grant in working together? Well, really figuring out who we are as a couple. Mm -hmm. What do we represent versus my goals and your goals? Because that can build some resentment, right? I have my own goals. Yeah, but that's in my column. Mm. But wh- who are we together as a couple? couple what do goals. we represent? Mm. Where do we want to go? What's our vision? Right. And then when we really started to reverse engineer and, and, and figure out, okay, well, what can I do to get us there? Mm. What are my strengths and weaknesses? What are your strengths mm. and weaknesses? Getting real and honest. Right. And then delegating the in charge of the certain area. Cause you can't have two generals. Right. Right. I love in that. the area. So, okay. You're going to be. The boss of whatever area is mm. right for you, not based on male, female. It's your relationship. Right. It's like, where are your skills? What exactly. Do you, yeah. if, if my skills were better in the business mm-hmm. and grants were better mm. visionary behind the scenes. Right. Then that's the way it would have looked for us. Right. But that's not the case. Well, there's such, there's such a, like an, an ego there. You know what I mean? So right. I, I love that you just said you have to look at what is the couple goal? But then I think what you said is perfect. It's like you have to have your individual goals as well. Right. So it's like you, you're you leading this movement together, but you have your own independent goals. Exactly. So you have, you're still, your identity is still with you, but then you have the identity with, with you and Grant that, right. is, that is beautiful. And I think that's what makes you guys such such a power couple and people really look to you like, how are they doing? And you both have such powerful brands individually and together. Yeah. So I love that you just said that. It, everything feeds each other. Right. Exactly. You know, it's we're, we're mono y mono. Hmm. I'm not like going off doing something that doesn't, that's that doesn't not help the, of the agreement. You know? Yeah. yeah. I, th- I think that's important. I, I would say anybody who's watching this, if you work with your, your partner, do that, go home and literally map out what is our vision? What are our goals together? And then even share your individual goals and share yeah. what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? So that Grant knows like these are Elena's goals and these are mine and nothing conflicts with each other. That's right. But, um, when we do our couples retreats, mm. I write the book on all that. Grant does all the oh, business. Really? I do more of the relationship yeah. stuff. Um, but I, I take a piece of paper, you know, like this. Mm. And it's one of the exercises that we have. And you draw a line here and a line here. And you mm. put my goals, mm. couples goals, his or her goals. I the love opposite, that. right? I love that. And so what, well, Grant had a huge epiphany at the last one because his column for his goals mm-hmm. was all like... And the couple's goals was, thrrr, and when it came to my goals, he didn't know what my goals were. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And of course, I knew all of his goals yeah. and the couple's goals, and then there was my goals, and he was like, it was a big eye-opening yeah. experience for him. I was like, yeah, you know, 
Hmm. Love is helping each other achieve their goals and their dreams. Right. Now, my this is just something for me. Mm -hmm. Everyone gets to design their own life, but but my goals are to make me better and stronger to, to support, to support mm -hmm. the couple's goals. Right. Because two is bigger and better in a right. healthy relationship than one. Right. I think know? it's it is important to share each other's goals because how many times I've been with Garrett and I'm like, I wonder what he's working on. And I like want to ask him, but if I know his goals, I can be like, how's it going here? You know, and yeah. vice versa. And it, and I try to share with Garrett because I think then I feel seen and he feels seen and we both are kind of on the same page with our relationship. So... Another thing, I love mm. that you just said that or just reminded me, this is something else that Grant and I did. Once we had the vision, mm -hmm. we map out based on strength and weaknesses, what are our roles? Then we wrote something down called wants and needs. Oh, okay. Like, what do you want and need from the relationship? Yeah. Because what was happening was I would deliver what I thought he wanted. Oh, okay. I would get resentful that he wasn't receiving. Or yeah, yeah, I love that. And I was like, what an ass. Mm hmm. But he didn't want it or need it and vice versa. Yeah. I'm like, well, that's not my jam. You I know love what I mean? That. And then he gets resentful that I'm, uh, what, what is he, what, what do you say? Um, entitled or mm. ungrateful or dessert, whatever yeah, yeah. he said, right? But when you write down wants and needs, mm. it's very clear. Okay. Yeah. You go over it with each other. Can so you deliver? Know. Like in the very beginning, it was married, mm. like kids, monogamy. Yeah, yeah. This was when we were first getting married. Right. Now the list has evolved over the years. But right. I'm talking very basic. Like, do you want marriage? Do you want kids? Do you want a family? Right. Do we raise them uh, by not punishing, hitting them, punishing them? Like, like get all that stuff sorted out in the I beginning. What's our, you know, religion, the this, the mm. that, the that, the that. And then, yes, I can give you that. I want a meal cooked for me. Can right. you do that? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Even simple things. Do you know though. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I, you guys, that is like a golden, that is like a golden nugget right there. Wants and needs. Because how often are we, you know, giving our significant other what we want? And then they don't even notice it. And you're like, what are you, I'm doing everything for you. That's how I felt. <laughs> and then when he finally was like, I want to be thanked. Yeah. You know, something yeah. simple. I want to be thanked for yeah. a dinner. I want, I want you to tell me that you're proud of me when yes. I do something great. I was like, oh, I know. You're like, that's it. That. Like, I mean, it, you're like, I was running an empire over here and you just want to say me to say I thank know. you. <laughs> like it literally, like it seems like common sense. Like no. I should have known that. Right. And done that. Right. But I actually needed to be told that because for some reason. Right. Maybe, you know, whatever. I don't need to analyze myself, but I didn't do it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that is an out point. Like I, I wouldn't like that if I was him doing all this stuff. Right. And I was just like, do more, do more. Let's do that. Yeah. And yeah. I wasn't like. Stop to say thank you. Yeah. 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 I yeah. would, I would say that, that men. They love what they do and they do it for the family and they do it for the vision. And so they want to, they want to feel the most appreciation and cheerleading from their wives. Yeah. And that's something I have to remind myself too. too. Cause I'm, I'll be like, I need it. Yeah. I'm like, go, go, too. go. And I'm like, I need to stop. And even though I'm stressed, go over to him, give him a hug. Like, Hey, thank you for everything you do. And it just like melts them. Same. <laughs> They're like, Oh my I God. I don't even realize how easy it's it so is. It's so easy. Guys are so it's easy. It's so crazy. <laughs> like if I send him a text right now and I'm like, I just. You're a badass. Yeah, yeah. I'm so proud of you. Yes. I was just thinking about it. Yes. Like, he writes me back, like, that you know, made like my great. Day. You know how tough he is? Mm -hmm. Like, I'll get, like, a heart and a yeah, yeah. emoji, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, who is this guy? Yeah. It just turns into they a butter. They butter. They're just butter. Yeah, I yeah. love it. It's awesome. It's awesome. You know, so the wants and needs is important. Because now you're not wondering and not delivering. Yes. Now you're like, okay, a meal, I can do that. Yeah, easy, easy yeah. and done. Well, it's been so fun to to get to know you more these past three days. It's been so fun to have you on the show, even though I'm in your podcast studio. It's, it's yours it's today. It's today. And today it's, it's mine. I love it. It's yours <laughs> Today. It's been amazing. I, I would love for you to tell people who are interested in anything with 10X, where should they go? How can they get started? What, how, just 10X? Just, I would just go, yeah, 10X. Cause there's so 10X. much, there's so much available. You can go to grantcardone.com. Perfect. Elenacardone.com. And well, um, your guys' events that you do, how can they find more information about your retreats and things like that if they're interested? Grantcardone.com. Okay, you guys. I, all the events are there. We have real estate summit coming up, business boot camp mm. coming up. We've got wealth con coming mm. up. I mean, there's the 10X ladies. I mean, yes. all, anything you want, remember. We're the, we're the Amazon yes. for the entrepreneur. Yes, I love it. We've got 
everything. I literally, you want, wh- when I move here, I'm going to be relationships like, yes. all the way up to ba- business scaling. Hey, and, you, you yeah. sold me. We're going to be neighbors. So I'm going to be like, Elena, where do I go for this? And you're like, guess what? The 10 X family has that. I'm like, perfect. Oh, oh I'm hooking you up <laughs> with the uh, everything. Everything. I'm yeah. so excited. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. You guys definitely follow Elena on, on social media and check out, go to grantcardone.com. And yeah, it was really fun to have you. Same. And I look forward to getting our relationship even further and moving to Miami. All right, you guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much. Remember to share this with your friends. If you found any power in this, which I know you did, she shared so many golden nuggets. Share it with your friends, pass it along, and listen every single week. All right, you guys, bye. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week.